left Columbus about 45 minutes to an hour ago. We've been getting calls the whole way up here. People call and asking where we are, how we're doing, how we have the baby yet. The contractions are only coming about every few minutes, so it's only about doing the contractions. The doctor said to head up. We're about 20 minutes outside of Atlanta now. We should be there shortly. Doctors around Columbus, they don't do um, natural childbirth after uh, C-section. So we had to go to Atlanta because that's the only supportive doctor that I could find. It's an inconvenience to have to drive this far, but it's worth the effort. Dr. Tate's office, how can I help you? Samantha. Hey, how are you? Good, how are you? 24 over 70. Head on in. For many, many reasons, every year the cesarean section rate has gone up. The last report is it went up another percent to 33%. Let's check this tummy of yours. Which means one birth in three is operative by opening up a woman's stomach instead of through her vagina, which would be the normal method. So we're going to see you again in a week, unless you call me first. That'll be the day after your due date, actually. <laughs> the uh, rate of cesareans in the United States currently is uh, far too high. The World Health Organization has uh, said that any cesarean section rate over 15% does more harm than good. Almost all women can have babies the normal way that, that was intended by nature. It's major surgery, your body's entered. A surgical incision is made on your uterus, so it is significant surgery. Uh, you usually don't go home until day three or four after the surgery. In the late 1980s, early 1990s, there was a, a large push to do less cesarean deliveries Cesarean deliveries were reserved for situations that uh, were somewhat urgent or emergent during the time of labor. Once you've made a low transverse incision on the uterus, there is some chance of having a complication. The risk that that incision can, can burst open during labor is less than 1%, but when it does occur, it can be catastrophic. This is gonna be a little girl. It'll be our second one. We were having this baby by a VBAC which is a vaginal birth after a cesarean. After I had my daughter by cesarean in um, 2009, I knew that I wanted to have a VBAC, and I had looked around Columbus, and I was unable to find one. Most of the nurses didn't even know what it was, you know, to have a natural after a cesarean. I'm um, seeing Dr. Tate because I wanted to have a VBAC. I contacted over 30 doctors or so and could not find anyone willing whatsoever. You know, comments like, I wouldn't touch it at all. Um, I'm not willing to, you will just have to find someone else or you're not going to find anyone that will allow a VBAC in this area. And it's for good reason. Everything we do has a risk. Just having a baby normally has a risk. There is a small risk of uterine rupture. We have to be ready to deal with it in a quick and expeditious manner so that harm is not done. The gorilla in the room here is, is medical malpractice. There are so many other things that have changed in obstetrics that up the cesarean section rate, but if you drop that gorilla in the room, then the others would not be so prevalent. We would be doing uh, breech deliveries. We would do, be doing forcep deliveries, all of which could lower the cesarean section rate at no detriment to the women or the babies. Basically, it came down to money. It's about business. It's about time as well. Uh, you have to be patient. You kind of just have to let nature take its course so you can't schedule as many people. It costs more to have a C-section than a vaginal delivery. And so it just seemed to us that it was about money at the end of the day than about what was best for mom and what was best for baby. My first C-section was necessary. You know, with her, you know, she was in pretty serious fetal distress. Um, her cord was around her neck and then across her chest, so it was getting compressed with each contraction. My second one was absolutely n not at all. I just, I didn't know enough to know better. 
I have showed up here and um, first they thought it was twins until my 20 week anatomy scan, uh, at which point they confirmed triplets. And um, I was very nervous at first about the possibility of a VBAC, but um, I thought, will I ever forgive myself for not trying? I, I can't really explain it. It feels like something's been taken from you. And, um, and unless you can try, you can't get it back. Somebody took it. My mom is actually the only woman that I've ever known to have a VBAC, so I knew that she would be supportive of my decision, even if nobody else was. It shouldn't even be a question unless they can find a medical reason not to do it. She has no medical reason. This is a young couple here that's cost them a lot of money to go. You know, it's just ridiculous. I believe that the doctors are putting my daughter at more risk by not providing that service in Columbus, Georgia and making her have to drive the two hours each way in traffic. That to me is putting my daughter in danger. When we discuss these issues, we do need to put it in perspective that there are countries in which women are dying. They're dying in childbirth because they do not have access to C-sections. And so to frame it as a, an issue of choice is something that is probably fairly exclusive to developed nations. Welcome to the um, ICANN of Atlanta. January meeting. We um, support women who have had cesareans and we work to educate women who um, maybe are trying to avoid that first cesarean. And I guess one of the things I think is a good way to kick off the discussion about what the facts are about uterine rupture and vaginal birth after cesarean is to hear your stories about what you were told by previous providers. My first provider told me only 5% of VBAC mothers would rupture, which we all know is <laughs> like point four percent and but those five percent when they do rupture it was automatically catastrophic and the mother and or baby would die they wanted to induce i said no i don't want to induce they didn't give me the risks of induction they didn't give me the risks of cesarean beforehand they just they said it, you know your baby is going to die if you don't have a c-section right now and then it was still another two hours and they probably don't mention to you that your risk of if you have a cesarean that your risk of dying actually goes up by four times over having a vaginal birth. Our medical system treats birth as, a, as something to fix. We know how to birth babies, and obstetricians don't trust that we know how to do that. It's also the most commonly performed surgery in the country. It's not having your tonsils out, it's not having your appendix out, or heart bypass, it's a cesarean section. That should be a wake-up call. The number one surgery in the country is not always necessary. There is a place in this world for cesarean surgeries. There's a reason why they exist. But I think that what it comes down to is that there is danger in having too many. Women are dying. In all fairness, not every cesarean surgery is unnecessary, but the vast majority in this country are, and it's starting to be dangerous. Linda was just an awesome girl. She cared about everybody. I'll never forget the phone call when she called me to say, guess who's pregnant? And I said, I don't know, Colleen? And she said, no, me, fool. And I said, are you kidding me? We were so excited. Benjamin was breech, so they scheduled her for the C-section. C-section went without issue, and that Saturday she was discharged home. And it was the next Sunday that she actually woke in the middle of the night to feed Benjamin, and one leg was considerably more swollen. And she showed it to Billy, her husband, and he said, I think we should call the doctor. She was in a recliner chair, and they believe that when she put the chair down to get up to answer the phone, the clot dislodged itself. And when she answered the phone to speak to the doctor, she right away said to her husband, I feel like I'm going to pass out. And with that, she did, and never came to after that. I think the C-section contributed to what happened. It was because she had that operation that she formed the blood clot. C-sections are major surgery, and I don't think that people realize how major they are. You are at a much greater risk with a cesarean. Any abdominal or lower surgery, people with knee surgery are prone to blood clots as well. If a doctor says, we're gonna schedule you for a C-section, you can say, 
are there any other options? And unfortunately, some women are under the impression that the C is an easier route to take. It's less painful, but it's really not. It comes with a lot of serious risks and complications, and one of them can be death. She wanted very much to be a mother, and that was taken from her unnecessarily. I miss her every day, all the time. Do you want to know the sex of the baby? Yes, please. It's a boy. Yay, that's what I want. <laughs> Wonderful. I'm a perinatologist. The kind of patients that come to my office may be labeled high risk when they're referred wow. from their primary doctor. But what I try to do with them is put their risk levels into a certain context so they're not fearful of what their diagnosis may or may not be. Kicking you, huh? Yeah, I feel it. I could be in a position to where I can shape the information such that it sounds as if a cesarean delivery is the proper way to end the pregnancy, but I'd rather shape the information such that the patient could understand what her choices are. You take the choice out of the patient's hands when you coach the argument, especially if you say to someone that their baby's going to die. Most people would say, well, what do I need to do next? There's over, I think, a million cesarean deliveries performed each year. What has happened during that decade maybe 90 on to the year 2000, we've seen more litigation. We've seen patients develop a sense that cesarean is safer than having a vaginal delivery. So the gains that were seen in the 1990s and pushing back the cesarean rate have been reversed totally. We know that 77% of OBGYNs will be sued at some point in their career, at least one time. Even if that number were 100%, if you divide by the number of patients seen over the course of her career, the actual risk of being sued is fairly low. However, the fear of being sued is huge. It's documented, it's worked its way into the foundation of the maternity care system in the United States. You just get used to it and it becomes a way of practicing medicine that's just normal for you. We're looking constantly for that one in a million proving that our patient doesn't have that. It's a defensive posture to try to prevent any adverse outcome, even though that the risk of complications could be higher in the long term by doing all these extra surgeries. There's a tremendous pressure to go in there and do the cesarean. I think the real reason is you're afraid of being sued. The rest of it all is just color around the outside. I'll stay here half the night, I'll get in at one in the morning, I'll put myself at legal risk if anything else goes wrong, and I'll make less money to boot. What is the incentive? That's a hard question to answer. What's an excessive amount? I think in most areas in the country, cesareans are done when they need to be done. We have a higher incidence these days of multiple births, maybe from infertility treatments. So those deliveries often need to be by a cesarean section. Unfortunately, in the U.S., we practice in a very um, medical, legally litigious society where people are often worried about being sued or suing their physician is a commonplace thing. And so I think doctors do do what's safe and wise, but ultimately the goal for an, any OB is to deliver a healthy baby. And if you know you can do that with cesarean section, that's what you're going to do. I think there are too many cesarean. I think the C-section rate is too high. I think that uh, a 30 percent cesarean uh, delivery rate here that we have in the United States is, an, is incredibly high. The modern discourse around childbirth seems to be very black and white. You're either destined for catastrophe, for the worst possible outcome, or it's safe. It's safer. It's as safe as life gets. It's, you know, there's nothing that can happen to you. You'll, you'll just be fine. And really, neither one of them is correct. A lot of times moms request their deliveries be on certain days. Sometimes it's for practical issues like childcare or their spouses are traveling or they are working and need to be delivered by a certain day. Sometimes it's practical reasons, but a lot of people actually request certain delivery days because of superstitious or religious reasons. But it's not something that I think we take willy-nilly and do very easily. So it's definitely a case-by-case -case decision. But I'm grateful for the ability to do cesarean sections. We save moms and we save babies. You know, has a doctor ever done a cesarean section for convenience? I'd be naive to say no. I'm sure there have been some. But again, it's a trust factor. You can do a cesarean section in the middle of the day when all your hospital staff is available. You know, it's planned versus letting the patient labor. And then at 3 o'clock in the morning when no one's around, the outcome is the same. You're doing an emergency cesarean section. So it may not be for convenience, but it can also be for safety.
a lot of the rage and a lot of the, the passion about these issues, especially concerning the cesarean rate and the overuse of the cesarean rate, comes from walking into a doctor's office and feeling like right off the bat that we're an emergency about to happen. I founded TheUnnecessarian.com. The website gets over half a million unique visitors a year, over a million page views, so this is obviously an issue that matters to a lot of people. The overriding theme that keeps coming back is frustration, a desire for reform in the system. Doctors hold all the cards, and the choices that the patients made depends on the physician, that personality of the physician. You come to have a lot of power, and then if you don't respect the process, the dynamic of the relationship, then you manipulate people to your own satisfaction. That round ball right there is the baby's head. So the authority and power and respect you automatically get from a patient, I think is sometimes distorted. Are you respecting the patient? Of course, I was born Jewish. I was brought up more traditional than truly orthodox. And I suppose it's still an ongoing process. You're never really standing still. So my belief that almost all women can have babies the normal way that was intended by nature it comes from that core belief, the fact that some women are going to need cesareans, some women are going to need other in kinds of interventions in order to either help them deliver vaginally, possibly. So I had to decide how I was going to practice. And my approach to it is I will dispense the best medicine I know how. Whether I get sued or not, that's going to be up to God. And if we had a system where you would only be sued if you truly were negligent, not the, the system we have in the United States, um, then I think a lot of the coloring would go away. Because by and large, I think uh, physicians do have integrity. When Samantha told me that she was going to drive to Atlanta, that she had found a doctor that would do a vaginal birth, I said, do it. You know, do it. You need to do what's best for you, and if that's going to make a big difference to you, you need to do it. Now, there were some people who she talked to that thought that she was crazy for doing that, and, and still they say that she was probably crazy for doing that, but um, they didn't experience what she experienced. They didn't go through what she went through. After I had my daughter um, by C-section, I went through like just a lot of down times. I would cry a lot, and I wasn't really able to do much with my daughter, like, you know, feed her myself, get her out of bed myself. About to call the doctor. Uh, contractions are four and a half minutes apart. Most doctors think that you should just trust them right off. The doctor said to go ahead and head up to the hospital, so that's where we're going now. The doctor in Columbus, he got me to sign the waiver that he only did, does C-sections after a primary C-section. He just wanted me to take his word that that was the best thing for me and the baby. Hey, Riley, you ready to go see Grandma? We're gonna drop you off at Grandma's and go get you a new sister. Approaching destination on the right. Yeah, I hate driving in Atlanta. I mean, I hate it with a fiery burning passion, but that's what we have to do to be able to have the baby naturally. Was the parking garage on the left side or the right side? It's on the right side. You can turn, nope, yeah, that's the one way. <laughs> this is a good time to be lost. <laughs> mm -hmm. There it is, at the end of emergency and all that. We're at the hospital about to get checked by the nurse to see if I'm in labor. How are you feeling? Oh. <laughs> Pull, 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 Glad you didn't have a C-section? Yes. <laughs> I can walk around and do normal stuff, so it's a lot different than last time. Say hi. Say hello. You ready to go home? I hate to use the term textbook labor, but in some ways it was, and she did extremely well. It would have been absolutely the wrong thing to do a cesarean in her. Who's that? 
Mommy. Mom and Linda. Life in my family without Linda has been devastating for all of us. It truly will never be the same. She should be here for him walking, for him graduating from school, for him getting married, for him having children. But unfortunately, she will never get to see any of that happen. You're at a much greater risk with a cesarean birth for a blood clot. However, it happens with vaginal births and during pregnancy as well. Our goal is to raise awareness and make all women aware that a cesarean section does not come without risks. It's a major surgery. We could what if it to death, but that's not going to bring her back if you do have a cesarean birth and if you develop any of the signs and symptoms of a blood clot, that you not just call your doctor, but get to your doctor or the ER immediately so that this tragedy never has to happen to another family or to another child. I often feel huge guilt for a long time. Um, right after it happened, I often thought my children are a little bit older. What if it was me? and she could have had that time with her son that she wanted really, really bad. Riley, where's the baby's nose? Boop. Where's the baby's cheek? Where's the baby's ear? It crossed my mind that I might have the baby in the car several times, but then once we got halfway there, I was like, okay, we're gonna make it. <laughs> I was definitely afraid still that I would um, have to have a C-section just because birth is not always 100% but I knew that I would really need it if I went to Dr. Tate. He wouldn't just give up and say I needed one because he wanted to go home. The main thing with a C-section in regards to emotions and stuff like that, you, you have to lie in bed and you can't really do things for yourself or your baby. And with a C-section, that's not possible for weeks, you know, maybe even months for some women. Birth is still hard no matter what you choose. So, I mean, it's still a toll on your body and. I think I expected a lot, like, you know, some kind of magic, you know, but that's not how it is. At the end of the day, what everybody wants is a healthy mother and a healthy baby. What bothers me and what bothers a lot of consumers is the idea that we're also looking for a healthy legal outcome, which can be at odds with the pursuit of healthy mother, healthy baby. One, two, three. Very good. It is extremely important that you trust your doctor and that you trust what he says would be the best thing for you. I trusted him. Um, and when he said vaginal births after cesareans were dangerous, you know, that people did have uterine rupture with them, um, I said, if there's even a chance of that for me, then, then I don't want that. So I made that choice. I had the choice to make for my safety and for my child's safety. So, so nobody made that choice for me. And I don't believe anybody should let a doctor make that decision for them. The choice of how to have a baby is kind of a basic human thing. That's something that everyone goes through all the world over. And I think it should be left up to the woman, not society or doctors, as to what should happen as far as her having a child. <laughs> Of course, there are risks associated with having a natural birth after a C-section, but there are risks with a C-section. There are risks with a natural birth as your first birth, and there's risks with walking down the street. As long as a woman knows the risks and is told by a doctor what can happen, it should be left up to her.